Hey ladies, I'm thinking that I'm about um, at the time that I need to oil my needle bars. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how to oil your needle bars, change your needle, and um, just oil your hook on a daily basis. So when you go to turn on your machine, the first thing you should do is oil the bobbin area. And if you are on, um, if you're on a Valiant, I'm on a Valiant, or if you're, I think it's the equivalent brother machine is the 1050 or the 1055, or if you're on the Venture, you're gonna have this button right here that you can go to whatever you needle, whatever needle you want to change at your needle, but you just hit this and there is your oiling button. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the oiling button. It's gonna say that it's gonna, um, the hand will rotate automatically to a position where it can easily be oiled. I'm gonna hit okay, but while I'm hitting okay, I'm gonna zoom in on this area so you can see what happens to your bobbin area, so I'm gonna hit okay. And that goes ahead and it puts your hook in the perfect position. Um, it's gonna match what you see here in this little picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop out my bobbin case. Oh, good thing I'm doing that because I have red thread in there. I need to change it to white anyways. Um, I have a couple different things. I have an oiling pen, which I really, really like. And then I have an actual oiler and this zoom is my preference. I like it because it has this long flexible um, wand and uh, I'm, and always leave it stored with the red cap on otherwise it's just going to erupt. And now I'm going to zoom in here. I like to take the end of this wand and I just bend it. Let me put it in here. Bend it with my finger. I put it right in here. And now I can watch the oil. See the oil? It's right there right now. I can see it come up this spout and I just gently squeeze it. There it went by my finger and one drop. And that should be enough. If you do too much, not a big deal. You can just take a little tissue and just kind of wipe it down right here. And then once you have that, I'm gonna put a bobbin back in. I'm using Magna Glides these days. Your Magna Glide bobbins have one side that's magnetic right here, and the other side that is this, um, I don't know if that's like light teal. So you always want the magnet side to be loaded in. And your bobbin's always gonna be headed in the right direction that way. And then you're going to pull it here and then just pull it straight up here. And that's where it should rest. If ever you um, lose tension in your bobbin, a good thing to do, because this happened to me the other day, um, you could take a business card or I have, where's my little sleeper? I have these. I ordered this. Actually, I think I, it, I know it says jerky, but I think I ordered them from Ganold. Or you can take like a business card or you could take just a piece of paper. This is just a post-it. You could just fold this and you're going to take it and just run it underneath this tension arm. You just put it in here and just kind of sweep it forward and you could clear a piece of lint out of there. I like this thing. This is the thing that I use and you just put it under here just kind of pull it this way and sometimes there's a piece of lint and that will throw off your tension so that's just a, a little note um, that's the first thing I would do if it seemed as though I didn't have any bobbin tension okay gonna pop my bobbin in here next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to oil my needle bars so how often do you oil your needle bars um, your manual is gonna tell you every 40 to 50 hours. So I think a good rule of thumb is every 45 hours. I have a little sticky here that says oil needle bars and then I change needles as well and I just write down how many hours and then I just stick it right here on the side of my machine. I just keep it right over here on the side of my machine. And this one I've had for so long it's fallen off and so really I keep it right here. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So I'm going to get out of the screen. How do you check your hours? To check your hours, you're going to go here to this button 
And for my machine, it might be different for your machine. I'm just going to go backwards. And here are my hours. So 285 hours. That's what I'm at right now. Um, and if you look here at my note, the last time I, I oiled was 229. So let's round that off to 230. I'm a little overdue because I'm really at um, 85 minus 30 is 55 and then I'm not quite there I'm so that's 55 56 um I'm a little overdue so let's go ahead and get those those needle bars oiled and I'm going to show you how to do that I wonder if I can see it from here if I'm going to have to zoom in even more So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down on my sticky note the new hours. And I'm going to get a new sticky notepad where it actually sticks. So let's put, and I'm going to do my needles too at the same time. So let's write needles and needle bar. Um, the recommendation for your needles would be every, um, every eight hours. So if you have 10 needles... 10 times 8 is 80 because you could spread your love on all of these or you can just change them every time you oil your needle bar. So every 40 to 50 hours and then you'll be sure that they're being changed out. So I'm at 285. So the next time I'm going to do this would be like 45 hours. So I'm going to shoot for doing my next needle bar um, oiling at 330 hours. That's what we're gonna shoot for. But this is what I'm doing right now, and I'm gonna put the date today, which is, I don't even know, is it 7, 17? 718, I think. We'll just put 718, okay? This is um, next time. And now I'm just going to put this on the side of my machine. This is what we've actually done. Okay. Stick this on the side of the machine. That way you can keep track. I'm just going to go over here and just put it on the side of my machine. Let's go ahead and do the actual oiling of the needle bar. So I'm going to come up here, say okay. Okay. This is the button you're going to go to. I'm going to hit that and I'm going to go to needle number one. That's where I'm at. You can see needle number one is right above the hole. And I'm just going to pull this down and where you're going to be oiling is going to be, you know, I'm going to take this off too. This is my table. I'm going to take it off so it's out of the way. It gives me a little more room. Let's see if I can get it under here so you can see. I'm gonna pull this down. And this right here, this little pad. Oh no, it's up here. You can't even really see it. This pad right here. Where we're oiling. Let's see if I can get a better angle like this. You're gonna pull this down and we're gonna put a drop of oil. Whoops. Right here, right on top of the felt pad right next to the needle bar. I hope you can see that. Maybe it'll be better for the next one. All right, I'm gonna grab this, pull it down, take my finger and put it on top of the pad, but right at the needle bar. I think you'll be able to see it better on the other ones. And I'm gonna just do a drop of oil. And you can see the oil coming up the little, is my glasses. I changed out my glasses because I was having trouble seeing. Okay, right there. And you can see that one drop of oil coming up. And there we go. That one is done. Let's see the next one. So you're going to notice that this one pulls down about half an inch above the hole in the needle plate. The one next to it will come all the way down. So this is going to be even easier for you to see. Here's my needle bar. Here's my felt pad right here. I'm going to put a drop of oil right where the metal, where the needle bar and the felt pad meet. There we go. Okay, we're going to do this one next, but look, it doesn't pull down. 
So if I go to needle number two, this one will pull right down. Back up at the screen, go to needle number two. Oh shoot, here we go. So we've already done needle number two, but I wanna be able to pull three all the way down. So here's three, goes all the way down, and I'm gonna put a drop of oil right here. And if it's a heavy drop of oil, that is totally fine too. Maybe this one wasn't that great. Uh -huh. I'm gonna put a, cause I couldn't see really well, so. I'd rather have like a drop and a half than a half a drop. I can't, still can't really see that one. Okay, I'm gonna hit my three button, move it over. Four is gonna come all the way down. I've already oiled three. tell if I got it there's my four but I'm oiling five I'm oiling six here's seven Eight, nine. Don't worry about all the thread coming undone because we're gonna change our needles out too. And 10, here's 10. And needle bars are done. Okay, let's go ahead and change out our needles. So I don't know where I put my needle changing tool. You have like a white handled tool that is an Allen wrench like this. This is the one that goes with my serger and it's the same fit. So I'm just gonna use this. So let me go ahead and pull this back a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these down and change each one of them. So if you just turn it twice, this is gonna fall right out. If there's one and you can just keep your hand under here and kind of catch it Let's see if I can do this where I'm not in the way it should fall there there's two I wonder if it's a better view from over here You don't have to turn it a lot, two times, and kind of just hit that needle and it'll come right down. It's three. Four. Five. And then I'm just counting the number of needles that I'm doing. I know my hand's in the way. All right, there are all your needles. Make sure these go in a safe place. You should have a needle exchange tool that you could use if you want it. I'll show it to you. I would show it to you, but I can't find it. So um, I did find it. Here it is. It looks like this. And when you push this in, it's kind of like a plunger. You push it in and then this opens up here. You can see that. And so when you go to put your needle in and there is a flat to the back, you just gotta kind of hold it like this. Or hold it from the front, whatever way you wanna hold it. Or you could put it right up here and then grab it. 
I'm trying to see how to get the best angle for you. And then you could go ahead and put it all the way up. As long as it hasn't turned flat to the back. So if you have, if your hands are bad and you need a little more help, you could use this tool, okay? I tend to just like to use my hands to hold stuff. So the needles you wanna use, you wanna use the HA um, EBBRs, and these are the 7511s. This machine, you're supposed to either use the 7511s or the 9014s, but they're the EBBRs and we sell them at the store. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and change all of these out. So I usually save this packaging. I don't know why this bag is so beat up. But I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna take all the new ones out and I'm gonna put all the old ones back in here and I'm gonna throw them away. This reminds me a piece of like, um, it looks like Wrigley's gum, is that what it's called? So I'm gonna take all these out. Here are all my new ones. I'm gonna put these on the right side of my table. And then I'm gonna get all my old ones and I'm gonna wrap them up back in here. Don't get them confused, don't drop them. Momo would have a field day. I like to just hold them in my hand and I kind of push it up and grab it right here. And I just go, I'll use the back of my finger now. I should, let me get a better angle for you. And I'm a little bit from the right right now. I'm not head on, but I'm gonna come up here. I like to take it like that. And I like to push it up with my fingernail. And make sure you push it straight up. If you don't have it straight up, uh, you might skip stitches. If he's not all the way up, sometimes I will loosen it and reload it again just to make sure he's all the way up there. That is needle number one. I'm going to thread them. Thread them while I'm doing it. Okay, let's do, let's go to, I'm going to go back to size. I'm just pushing it so I can have access. I'll thread them all in the end. It'll be easier. Here's number three. I'm just gonna grab it again, push it straight up. I'm applying upward pressure. Next one. And you could use that needle exchange tool too. Whatever's going to make it easier for you. I'm gonna move to needle number one right now, I'm needle number 10 right above the hole in the needle plate. I'm gonna move to needle number one so I'll have more room over here. So I can finish up. Okay, let's finish up this side.
That's not a very good view for you, is it? Hang on. Let's go over here. Right angle. And I have two more. Now, if you go to thread these and they're not threading, that should be your cue to take the needle out and put it back in again and make sure it is all the way in. Those look good. Let's go ahead and thread them up now. Okay. I'm just going to go right through them. So number two, and then you're not going to see this screen, but I'll just show you my threading down here. So that's number two. Grab that. Everything, keeping your hand nice and close for everything just makes everything so much easier. So here's eight. I'm going to bring my needle forward to the right of the threader, to the left of the whole threading mechanism, and then up and round. Number nine. Number nine, I'm out of the thread guide. So what I like to do is pull down, put it behind the thread guide, let it pop up, and then pull it into place. Whoops. Still on number eight. Let me get to number nine and number ten. And we are done. Needle bars are uh, oiled, hook is oiled, needles are changed, and everything is threaded and everything threaded perfectly. And so you want to do that every 40 to 50 hours. And the needles, I mean, you could change those um, every two times. So, you know, I used to do like every 80 hours, every 80 to 100 hours. And now I just decided I'm just going to do it every time I oil my needle bars. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, call the shop and I will see you later.